and welcome to another episode of Derby County Academy in Focus. This week we're at Pride Park Stadium and we're celebrating the EFL's Youth Development Week. Later in the programme we'll be catching up with Dijon Brown, the striker on loan at Gateshead, who is really catching the eye. Uh, but we start this edition of the programme by talking to Derby's Academy Manager, Matt Hale. Yeah, it's gone quick, um, which is probably, you know, it's, it's a good thing. I must have enjoyed it. Um, it's, it's been hectic, it's been busy, been a lot to get used to, you know, new surroundings, new environment, new players, um, a whole group of new staff. So it's been, um, I wouldn't say a whirlwind, but just a lot to sort of take in and get your head round in, in the first few months. But, um, but I've certainly enjoyed it um, and enjoying the challenge and in, in the role. So, yeah, almost a year. Did you come in trying to change a lot straight away or do you have to come in and, and see how the place works before you start to try and put your own stamp on it? Yeah, I, I did purpose. I think I said that right at the start when I did sort of an interview when, when I first came in. Naturally, there was already a couple of gaps within the staffing structure, so we had to, to get on with that straight away and that kind of impacted other roles. So we, we did end up having a few changes. Thank, thankfully, nobody really left the building. Um, we retained pretty much every member of staff um, and just filled the gaps where we needed to. So there was some sort of natural change that happened. But myself and what I call the academy leadership team, there's eight or nine of us on that group, heads of department. We spent the last sort of six or seven months reviewing everything, each and every department, all the disciplines, and making sure that we've got a fit and functional setup that can, again, deliver top quality players, elite, elite athletes for hopefully the championship and beyond. Um, but there may be some changes al along the way, which, um, which I hope you know, are, are good. And the staff and, and even the players have been part of that, whether it's our culture or the environment being changed a little bit. Um, so yeah, there might be some change along the way coming up, but certainly we've taken a good six or seven months to look at everything really. Are there any major changes that, that you would already point to or be able to explain to people, things that have happened? I think one of, one of the things that, that we did do was we brought in Craig Fleming, his head of technical development, somebody that I think my job's more sort of operational away from the pitch a lot. It's not to say I don't watch training or games, I'm, I'm there pretty much, particularly around the, the professional development phase, but somebody on the pitch to work with the coaches in the technical team so Craig came in and his brief was to embed a evolved sort of playing style that we felt best suited us developing players for, for, the, for the game again not just for League One the championship and beyond and he had a lot of experience from Southampton in the Premier League he'd worked in that first team environment so he came with an expectation in what he thought you needed to have qualities wide, characteristics wise. He came in sort of August, September time, worked really well with Jake Buxton, Keith Briggs, Adam Robinson and, and the guys in the professional development phase to embed that philosophy. And I think that's probably been a real success over the first six, seven months of this season. We've been competitive across those age groups. And I think you can see a real distinct style between the under 18s and under 21s. So I think that was one change that happened which I think again I, I reflect back on that as a positive amendment to the way in which we, we've been playing and and again I think the, the young lads have enjoyed playing in that style and we've had some some good performances and we've seen some real good development from from a lot of the individuals in there. All that said there is some news about Craig I think. Having said that <laughs> Craig unfortunately left the football club just yesterday um, Again, I think we were very lucky to be able to bring him to the football club, but always knew that he'd coached at first team level in the Premier League and, and done really well with uh, Ralph, Ralph Hassenhutel. Ralph, as most people will be aware, and over the weekend he'd, he'd got a role at Wolfsburg in the German Bundesliga and Craig was one of the first ones that he contacted. So, unfortunately, that's football, you know, Saturday, Craig was was at Derby and by sort of Monday morning he's on a plane to, to Germany and he can't you know stand in his way he's done a fantastic job here we thank him for that and, and it's a great opportunity for him to go and work again at arguably you know one of the best leagues in, in the world so 
Um, we'll take our time, we'll, we'll look at what we do next, but I know that the pro phase is in safe hands with, with Bucko, Briggsy and, and the rest of the PDP to carry on that good work that we've, we've started and Craig's been a big part of. Well, it's going to be my question actually, do you look to replace him or do you have enough from the work he's done over the last few months in terms of a template that you, you maybe don't need to, but at least straight away bring well, someone in? We've got in. a template and we've got some really good work that, again, he's brought ideas in and a style to the football club in, or in the higher part of the academy. The staff are really, have a really good understanding of that methodology now. We'll take our time, we're almost at the end of the season, you know, we've got four or five weeks left. We'll take our time to review that work as well, just to make sure it is, you know, right what we want to do, how we're going to take things forward, and then make some decisions over the summer about what we do in terms of a replacement or additional staff, or, you know, do you structure things a little bit differently? I think it's pretty open at the moment, and we just finish the season well and be competitive until the summer. In terms of specific players, I'll ask you about a couple of others a little later, but um, Cruz Allen, I think, is the latest to, to sign a pro deal. Yeah, Cruz um, was rewarded with that on his 17th birthday a few a couple of weeks back. He's obviously playing for his country in Wales. He's, he's off at the moment on international duty. He's done really well in our 21s, let alone the 18s. Um, and, and again, we're keen to recognise our own players that have come through our pathway and um, fully deserved. You know, he's got a, a lot of talent, that boy, and, and we wish him well. So, yeah, yeah, good luck to him. Yeah, he follows Jack Thompson. Dijon Brown have, have signed pro deals this year as well. How far sort of out in advance of, of the 17th birthday did you, do you generally know who's going to be offered something and who isn't? Well, I think all players mature and develop at a different time. So some you think, OK, yeah, the time's right now as they approach their 17th birthday and kind of legally that's the time you can do that professional contract. But then others, for different reasons, whether it's physical maturation or they're not quite ready yet to be rewarded for a professional contract, it might be a little bit later. So I think all players are, you know, slightly different. It, it just depends, but certainly with probably the game at the moment in academy football at that age group, it's really competitive. You know, Premier League clubs, you know, at our training ground, which is probably a good thing, shows we're doing something right every week, every Saturday, every Sunday. So they're looking at our top talent for sure. Our job is to retain that top talent and show them that this is the place where you get that opportunity. So if, if they're showing that top talent and high potential, then you want to make sure you reward that early, really. And um, uh, hopefully we've got some more players in that, in that pipeline. I think all three of the players I've mentioned there have been recognised by their countries over this international break. I think it's eight or nine in total. Are international call-ups one of the sort of markers of, of achievement that you look at as an academy? I, I do, personally, and I think, yeah, that most of the staff I work with would say that. I think if you look at what we're trying to aspire to be, and that's a Premier League football club, if you go to any Premier League football ground this week, it's pretty quiet. And that means most of those first team players are playing for their country off an international break. So I think if you're going to have aspirations to be in that Premier League team when we get there, then you've got to be working hard to try and get into your, your international setup. I mean, it's not everything, but it, certainly if you're in the top 18, 20 players of your country, um, then I think you, you, you've clearly got that talent and you're being recognised at international level. So I do think it's, it's a marker, it's important, it's not everything. Um, but I like to think that we can help those lads here in the academy in abundance to try and achieve international recognition. Mentioned Dijon Brown a couple of times already, and, and we're going to hear from him a little later in the programme. He's loving life at, at Gateshead at the moment. How pleased are you with the success that he's having out on loan? Yeah, brilliant. I mean, we had a lot of interest in Dej, to be honest, and we have throughout the season at different points. I mean, we liaise quite a bit with the first team staff on is it right, is it, is it not right? Um, this particular loan felt right when it came up. It's full time at Gateshead, you know, conference or National League Premier, one step away from the league. Uh, we can get up there and watch him, we can keep his individual development work every day going, so it's not a part time loan where he trains in the evenings. So it just all fitted right, really, and, and he's got his opportunity. He's had to learn as well to sit on the bench which he hasn't done much here. He's, you know, he's one of the first names on the team sheet. 
quite rightly. But sometimes lads need to understand how difficult it is to get into a team, particularly at senior football. So he's learning that, you know, he's learning to live away from home. He's learning to probably cook for himself and wash his own pants and things like that. So I think he's having a great life experience as well as the football. And the, the loan, I think, you know, has worked really well. He's scored, I think, six goals now. Um, so it, it's going well. I mean, he'll come back certainly a better player, learning some different things that, Again, I'm a big advocate of the academy, obviously. But there's also other ways in which you can learn your trade as a professional footballer, and I think he would have learned some new lessons at Gateshead. Yeah, and, and he's a great advert for, for what you're trying to do at Moor Farm. You referenced a little bit, I think, toward the start of the conversation, but what's next in, in terms of what you're looking to do and, and maybe change or, or not change? We've got lots probably in the background that, that we're looking at, whether it's processes, player audits, where we get lots of different disciplines in a room to discuss each and every single player. Um, we've got plans to try and rebrand certain areas of of the academy um, and the, the academy areas. Uh, we, we've, we've got different player strategies on their individual development plans that we want to put in place so that, again, each and every single player has a different journey. You know, hopefully we get some in the first team, but some might have to go out on loan, some could go straight in, some need to experience perhaps training in a League Two club for a week or something. So we're kind of designing different individual development plans for every single player that we've got, understanding that their journey is going to be different. So I think there's a lot of work that we're trying to put in place behind the scenes ready for next season around those individual players. Matt Hale there, who mentioned some of the young Rams called up for international duty over the break. We thought we'd give you the definitive list. Darren Robinson and Charlie Lindsay are both away with Northern Ireland's under-21s. Carlos Richards is with Gibraltar. At under-17 level, Cruz Allen is with Wales and Nar McAndrew is with the Republic of Ireland. Dan Cox has been called up by Wales under-19s. Goalkeeper Jack Thompson is in the England under-18 squad and Kai Robinson has joined England's under-19s. And we should mention Dejon Brown, who was called up by Jamaica's under-21s for their training camp in Spain before that was postponed. I'm sure he'll get another opportunity as soon. You'll hear from him uh, shortly on the programme. First, a new £12 million football hub opened in Derby recently, and Derby County will be using the facility on Racecourse Park as one of their four new talent ID centres. The first sessions were held there last month, and Rams TV was there. centres um, regionally around Derby. Um, we've aimed for areas within the catchment of, of the city, so this one's the Derby base. Um, we have one at Castle Vale which is Sutton Coalfield. Um, we've got one in Nottingham which is Carlton and we have one in Leicester which is Rockington College. So we're trying to um, encourage talented footballers to come into the centres um, with a view to hopefully then coming into the academy for a trial. I think the wider the spread for us in terms of getting as many players into the centres as we can. Um, we see it as sort of like a, a step up from grassroots. So talented footballers from grassroots, um, they've got sort of a platform to come and showcase their ability. Um, the talent ID centres will hopefully provide that platform for them. Um, if they perform well in the centres, then there is then the chance that they can come into the academy for a trial. Um, so hopefully the, the more players we can see, hopefully the more then will come into the academy and we can increase the quality in the squads in the, in the academy. No, the standard's been very good. You know, this is three weeks now. We're the third week we've been doing it. So uh, yeah, they're, they're getting more comfortable and getting more confident as it goes on because the more they get to know you, they, you know how you how you want it, them to do it, and uh, you just try to pass on your you know your experiences that I had as a, a young player and uh, as a as a senior coach really. They're, they've done really well. They they've taken a lot of things on board, and a lot of it is repetition. You know, even though sometimes it might be a little possession game where it's, it may be 3v2 or a, a passing drill, you know, they have to concentrate and they have to take things on board. And I'm trying to help them and, and try to 
get them to give me what they're thinking as well because it's important that they they start to understand what is wanted to go further. It's a fantastic facility, isn't it? You know, and uh, Derby, are, you're really, they've got to be really proud to have this now. And uh, you know, with Derby County being able to use the facility, it's uh, it's excellent. And uh, let's hope we can, you know, get a few more uh, homebred players into the first team and. Uh, like we have in, you know, in recent times, and uh, hopefully they can move on and uh, have a successful career. Ultimately, the 12 weeks um, is going to be a mix of training and games. Um, ideally, we want to have sort of three games within the 12 weeks for the boys. Um, the training's okay to a certain extent to look how they're doing, but we also need to see them in a games programme as well. Um, at the moment, because it's the outset of the centres, we haven't got the games incorporated yet, but we're hoping to start that after Easter. So the 12-week programme will start straight after the, um, heart, uh, the, the term Easter. Um, and then we will get sort of a three-week block of training, look at getting a game, and then the same again. So hopefully that will repeat three times. Um, I think to start with, we'll probably make it two games in the first block up until the summer. And then from next season, that's when we'll try to incorporate the three games into the programme for all the boys. We want there to be sort of a clear distinction between the academy and the talent ID centres. We want the boys to have the aspiration to come into the academy set up. Um, so this centre here in Derby, it's central to the city. It's a fantastic new um, development. So they've spent quite a lot of money on this. As you can see, there's four brand new 3G pitches. Um, and yeah, it's we, we wanted it as local to the club and to the academy as we could get it. Um, and we just wanted the boys to be in a, in a great environment for them to come in and perform at their best. A look at the new Derby Football Hub there. Here's how things have been going for our academy sides recently then. The under-18s saw a three-match unbeaten run ended by Blackburn recently and they were held by Forest at home last time out. The end of the season is in sight now, just five games remaining, including trips to Leeds and to Wolves. Derby in a race for third place in Premier League North. Liverpool currently have the edge on goal difference and a game in hand. It could all come down to that meeting at Moor Farm on the final day of the campaign. A big win at Manchester United, the highlight for the under-21s of late. They came up just short in a pair of home defeats to Wolves and Stoke as well. That means reaching the playoff stage of Premier League Two will be a tough ask. The Rams would need to win all three of their remaining Premier League Two games to be in with a shout. The season concludes against Everton next month. Tottenham are the favourites for the Premier League Two title. Two points clear and two games in hand on their closest rivals. Derby seven points off the playoffs with plenty of teams between them and the top 16. Finally, we can't talk about the Derby County Academy this month without talking about the Derby County Academy star who is tearing it up on loan in the North East. That man is, of course, Dijon Brown, who has been involved in every game since joining Gateshead on loan in January and has hit a number of personal milestones over the last couple of weeks. He scored his first senior goal to snatch a point at Boreham Wood. He bagged his first hat-trick in the FA Trophy quarter-final and he made his first senior start in league football as well. It was a good experience. Uh, the team welcomed me in well. The gaffer and the coaching assistants helped me settle in well. Um, tried to just get out and play my football from the start. Uh, obviously, at the start, I wasn't in the team as such, and I was, you know, coming off of the bench and trying to make an impact in that way, and just do what I can to uh, uh push the team forward with the time that I had. Um, then at Boreham Wood, I got my first goal coming off the bench, and since then, yeah, I've uh, put a few in, and yeah, it's been good. Tell me about that first goal and that feeling. The, the celebration was great. Yeah, no, the feeling was amazing. Obviously, before that, I had come on a, a bit in the past, you know, for like 10, 15 minutes at the end of the game. So I, I wasn't expecting to score as such. But, you know, when I came on and the ball fell to me, I seen an opportunity and I took it. Yeah, it was a major feeling in the last uh, last minutes of the game to help us get a point. They've had you involved in, in every single game since you arrived. But as you said, you had to wait a while to, to make your first start. How useful were all those substitute appearances, the 10, 15 minutes here and there to, to get you up to speed? Because I, I imagine the National League is, is a different beast to what you've been playing in previously. Yeah, no, the, the, the few minutes that I was getting did help me to, you know, 
build up my uh, senses on what what the game will be like if I do get longer to play. So it did help me um, get used to it quicker. And you have that first goal against Boreham Wood and then you're off to the races. You score in your next three games as well. You get a hat-trick too uh, in the trophy. Tell me about that. That must have just been the best day. Yeah, it was great. Uh, that was uh, one of my, I think it was my second stop, that one. And obviously to get the, the hat-trick and do it so quickly as well was an amazing feeling with my family travelling all the way down there and all the, in front of all the home fans as well. Yeah, it was a great feeling to do that. Tell me about the fans. I think they've got a song for you, a nickname for you as well. They seem to have taken to you very well indeed. Yeah, no, the fans are great. Um, before games, they're cheering. When you're coming in through the tunnel, they're great. And even when we have games far away, you know, down London sides, all the fans that travel down, yeah, they're amazing supporters, honestly. What's been the biggest adjustment you've had to make? I, I imagine being such a, way, a, a long way from home must have been one of them. Yeah, to be fair, that's, yeah, probably selling into a new team as well would have been hard because I've been at Derby since I was a kid, so that was difficult to do. But, um, yeah, moving away from home and living so far away on my own has been a uh, change. You think you've adjusted pretty well, though? Yeah, I think so. I think it took a few weeks, but since uh, I've settled in now, uh, yeah, I'm used to it. I feel like when I'm walking around at, at Moor Farm at the moment, every Monday somebody says, oh, I went to see Dave this weekend. Tell me about how Derby is staying in touch with you. You know, uh, it's good. Um, the coaches, the, uh, different coaches come down to watch me play. Uh, the last game a coach came to watch. So, yeah, it's great to uh, have that support from home club for them to uh, come all the way to the games and show their support in that way. And as for Gateshead... You're into a, a semi-final in the Cup. There might be a trip to Wembley to come for you. You're right in the mix for the playoffs as well. What do you think you can achieve there with, with them this season? You know, the main goal from the whole team and, you know, passed down from the gaffer is to what we can achieve. We have to keep striving to achieve that. We can get, you know, in the, in the perfect run, we could get two Wembley trips in one season, which is, you know, it's amazing. So that's, a, that's the goal that everyone's pushing for. Well, Dej, it's been brilliant catching up. Thanks for taking the time. Yes, for having me. Great to catch up with Dijon and fingers crossed that he and Gateshead can make it two trips to Wembley over the next couple of weeks. That's all for this edition of Derby County Academy in Focus. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.